Okay, we're back. We've just uh, screeded out the concrete and the form. Sprayed it down with a little, little bit of water just because we're starting to dry out. Uh, we used a Sawzall. We're gonna use this Ryobi Sawzall with no attachment in there just to uh, vibrate the edges to uh, get all the bubbles and the voids and the air traps out. Uh, I was a little uh, skeptical that with as uh, thin as the mix is, I didn't necessarily expect that there would be much in the way of voids because it, it seemed like it was uh, pretty fluid, but um, don't miss that step because certainly as I was going around there, there was a lot of air bubbles that popped up, so it can be a little bit deceiving. Um, step that uh, we didn't get on camera is I stuffed a couple of uh, quarter inch pieces of rebar in here um, just because I was concerned about the overall length. And as I'm manipulating this thing, what's the chances that I knock it out of this form and I crack it? Um, now, all indicators are showing that uh, that's not really a concern, but I'd rather be kind of safe than sorry. So anyways, I got a couple of hours invested in putting this thing together now, and I'd really hate to have that thing crack just because um, I skipped a step that I could have very easily just taken care of from scratch. So anyways, um, you can see a couple of little... Uh, Street lines in there. I'm not too worried about the bottom half of this being perfect because that is going to be the side that is going to be glued down to my brick. So the ugly side face down. So actually, all in all, um, turning out to be pretty good. Uh, we had calculated that we needed four bags, and we actually used five. So I'm a, it's a little bit of a mystery to me <laughs> where the extra half cubic foot of material went. Um, actually, it's not that much because you can see there's a lot of uh, overspill, and I got a half a bucket of mud left too, so... Anyways, it just just a little bit in the the mixing and um, scraping stuff out of the bucket and not getting a full batch probably had to do with the need to crack one more bag. But I'm glad I did because it was just under the edge and I really wanted a two inch edge, so that uh, that gave me just enough that I could screed out the top. And you can see. As we got this wet surface here, it's already starting to show signs of curing. And it's only been a few, mm, it's been about five, ten minutes since we stopped working it. So, sets pretty quick. I'm uh, excited to see what it is going to come out like after we're done. Now, says that uh, it's cured in about an hour, except for in low temperatures. So right now, I'm going to say that we're in low temperatures. We're probably in the mid-50s right now, so it's not drying real fast. It doesn't have direct sunlight on it. You can see the batch is still a little bit wet. Um, so I'm going to keep this uh, I'm going to keep this here in this position. I'm not going to mess with it. And then we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to see what we got if uh if this thing turns out to be a complete disaster or if uh we win and if it looks like the the other side's uh close enough we'll probably do some um finishing out work with some stone tools on the other side just to make sure our edges are nice and clean and straight and then we're very likely to put a finish coat on this thing so that's to be determined. I don't know where that part of the project is going to go yet, but uh, so far so good. We're looking uh, we're looking at having a successful operation here. So more to come. 
I'll uh, continue this video in the next day or so. So we'll be back.